Construction loans. If you're thinking about building a house and you don't have massive amounts of cash laying around, then you're going to need a construction loan. And I'm reading this. First, my disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor, financial wizard, or a financial expert of any kind. This information comes from our experience after building our house in 2018. This information applies mostly to residential properties. I do not have any experience with commercial properties. There are basically two kinds of construction loans, the construction only loan and the construction to permanent loan. A construction only loan is just that, it is only for the construction of your home. When the construction is finished or close to being finished, you will have to apply for a mortgage for your home. We did not choose this type of loan. Why not? You have to apply for a loan twice, once for the construction loan and once for the mortgage. That means that you should not buy or finance anything during the construction of your house because in a few months you will have to apply for a mortgage. If you have ever applied for a mortgage before, then you know it can be a long and invasive process. They usually look through all of your finances and tax records for the previous two years. You need to have the best credit possible so you can get the lowest rate. That means you should not have any newly opened accounts or a bunch of inquiries on your credit report. Also, you have to, man, cracky McCrackers in there. Also, you have to apply for a loan twice. That means going to the bank or lender twice. Having somebody all up in your personal finance business twice, no thank you. The other type of loan is a construction to permanent loan. This is the type of loan that we used. This is a construction loan that rolls into a mortgage after the construction is complete. You only have to apply for this loan one time at the very beginning. After the construction is complete and all of the final inspections are done, the lender will roll your construction loan into your mortgage. When our construction and inspections were all done, I just had to sign a couple of documents and the construction loan rolled into our mortgage. It was simple. We did not have to apply for anything again. They did not run our credit again. This is important because what if you need to use your credit after the construction begins? What if your car breaks down or your car is totaled and you need to buy a new one? New accounts will lower your credit score. What if you have a medical or other type emergency and you need to run up a credit card to pay for it? That will lower your credit score. It could hurt you when you go to apply for a mortgage when the construction of your house is almost complete. I had planned on buying a tractor or mini excavator while we were building our house so I could use it around our property. I ended up not buying one, but I could have financed one and not worried about hurting my credit score because my construction loan was going to roll over automatically into our mortgage. What about buying a new washer and dryer or new furniture for your new house? With a construction to permanent loan, you can buy and finance these at any time because you won't be applying for a mortgage. Maybe there, bright lights. Maybe there is a great sale going on and you don't want to wait until construction is done. Or maybe that couch you want is back ordered or has to be custom built and it will take a month to get. So you want to go ahead and buy it a month or two before the construction is complete. That way it will be ready as soon as your house is complete. With a construction to permanent loan, you can go ahead and buy or finance these things because you don't have to apply for a mortgage. Let's talk about a few things that apply to all construction loans. Construction loans are usually interest only loans. The good thing about an interest only loan is that it can mean a lower monthly payment for you during construction. That is important if you are paying rent or paying on a mortgage for one house while trying to build another. Construction loans are temporary or short term loans, usually lasting between 11 and 13 months. Our construction loan was a 12 month loan. That means we had to be done with the construction and refinanced into a mortgage before the 12 month term was up. Otherwise, there could be big penalties, 
or fees to pay in order to get an extension on our loan. A house can usually be built in four to six months, so an 11 or 12 month loan should give you plenty of time for construction or refinancing. Some things that could cause construction to take longer than four to six months are bad or rainy weather or changing your home design in the middle of construction. A construction loan is usually paid in draws. In the case of our loan, it was paid in six separate draws. Each draw was paid after a specified amount of work was completed and inspected. You do not get a big check up front for the entire amount of the construction. This is a good thing. You might end up spending all the money on a new car, a trip to Vegas, or whatever, and not paying for the construction. Also, the money is sent to your contractor. It is not sent to you. Our lender required that our contractor sign a paper that said he agreed with the draw schedule. The lender had problems in the past with other contractors not following their draw schedule and then demanding money or ultimately quitting the job because the lender wouldn't give them money until certain things were done. Now the lender is clear and upfront with every contractor so they know what to expect and what is expected of them. This was not a problem for our contractor. He looked over the draw schedule and signed the paper for the lender. This next piece of information is a big reason why I wanted to make this video for other people, to try to help other people. This next thing that happened to us was very stressful. It almost caused a major problem for us and almost stopped the construction completely. We qualified for 100% financing, but we still needed a lot of cash to get the project started. That was a real surprise to me and it was a big problem that we had to figure out quickly. We spent most of our cash as a down payment on our land because I thought I was getting 100% financing on the construction. Well, we did get 100% financing on the construction, but here is the problem. Blah, 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 blah. We got the first draw on the day that we started the construction loan. It was a very small amount, around $6,000. It was only enough to cover a few permits and the cost of site prep and digging out the basement. Draw number two was around $50,000. It would not be given to us for several weeks until after the footers, the basement walls, and the concrete floor for the basement had all been installed. The subcontractors want their money as soon as their job is complete. They do not want to wait several weeks for me to get a draw from the lender. So I had to come up with a lot of cash, around $30,000 at the last minute to get this project started. On a side note, you should get the cash back with the last draw when all construction is complete if you haven't gone over your budget and if you have an honest contractor. Can you tiptoe around a little bit up there, please? Woo! Your contractor might be different. He might float you the money or pay his subs out of his own pocket until more draw money comes in. Your contractor might even get the construction loan in his own name or his company's name so you don't have to deal with the lenders or the draws at all. Ask your contractor about this situation so you know what to expect and you'll know if you're going to need a bunch of cash up front even if you get 100% financing for the construction. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how the draws worked for us. We got the first draw on the day that we closed on the loan. As I said earlier, it was a small amount, around $6,000. Then our contractor had to start working on stuff that was required for the next draw. Once he got everything done that was required for the second draw, I had to email my lender and let her know that we were ready for the next draw. She sent out an inspector to look over the property and make sure that the required work had been done. If everything that was required for the draw was complete, she would issue a check to my general contractor. He would go by and pick it up. From the time that I emailed her until the time that my contractor got the check in his hand, it could have been as fast as one day or maybe three or four days. A lot of it depended on how busy the lender's inspector was and how fast he could come by the property 
to verify that the required work had been completed. Do you need a licensed general contractor to get a construction loan? Maybe. It depends on your lender. Our lender would not allow us to be an owner builder. They wanted to see that we had a signed contract with a general contractor. You might be able to find a lender that will allow you to be your own general contractor. I called some local and smaller banks near us. I did not find any that would allow us to be an owner builder, but I gave up pretty quick. I also had other reasons as to why I had to give up on that thought of being an owner builder. If you want to build your own house and you need a construction loan to do it, keep reaching out to lenders until you get the answer you need. I'm sure you can find a lender that will say yes if you call enough of them. It's been a couple years since we built our house, so hopefully I am remembering the numbers right. I think our lender would give us 90 to 100% financing if we used a licensed general contractor. They would give us around 80% financing if we used an unlicensed contractor. We chose to go with a licensed contractor so we could get the 100% financing. How does the lender determine how much money they will give you to build your house. Just because you say you need a certain amount, that does not mean that the lender will give you that amount. Our general contractor looked at our home plans and gave us an estimate for the cost to build. Let's keep it simple and say it would cost $100,000 to build our house. We applied for the construction loan asking for $100,000 because that is what our general contractor said we needed. When we applied for the loan, we gave the lender our home plans and the estimate for the cost to build. Our lender worked with a real estate appraiser to determine if the money we were asking for is what we really needed to build. The appraiser looks at the house plans, looks at the land, and compares it as a finished product to similar properties in the area. He says, if this house is built on this land, it would be worth this after it is completed. In our case, the appraiser determined that what we were asking for was a fair amount. He felt that the general contractor did a good job with his estimation on building costs. Remember from earlier, I said that we got 100% financing. Using our example of $100,000, that means they would have loaned us the entire $100,000 to build our house. But what if we used a contractor that did not have a license and the lender would only loan us 80% of the estimated cost to build? That means the lender would only give us $80,000 to build and we would have to come up with the other $20,000 in cash. Another thing to think about is if your contractor estimates higher than the real estate appraiser. Let's say the contractor estimated $120,000 to build, but the real estate agent thinks the property would only be worth $100,000 after it was done. The lender will go with what the appraiser says over the contractor. The lender will only give you $100,000 if you got approved for 100% financing. Then you would have to either come up with the rest of the cash that the contractor needs to build or you can get with the contractor to look over the estimate and try to make some adjustments. The housing market can affect how much the lender will give you for construction costs. Right now in 2020, the housing market is booming and values are up. When the appraiser is looking at your plans and your estimate to build, it should be easier to get approved for the amount you need because he will be comparing your completed property to other properties in a good market. If the housing market is terrible and values were falling like in 2008 to 2010, you might have a harder time getting all the money you need for the construction cost. Foreclosures and dropping home values will hurt you when the appraiser goes to compare your future completed project to other properties. We're almost done. We made it to the last segment. What if you still owe money on the land that you are building your house on? When we closed on our construction loan, the lender paid off our land. Of course, the money that we owed on the land was rolled into our construction loan and eventually into our mortgage after the house was finished. That's important to know if you still owe money on the land that you want to build a house on. 
You need enough equity in the property so you can borrow not only the construction cost, but also enough money to pay off your land. If you owe a lot on your land or you have very little equity, it could affect how much money out of the construction loan you will have left over to build your house. For example, let's say that you are going to build a house for $100,000. Your general contractor has estimated that it would cost you $100,000 to build your house. Now let's say that you owe $20,000 on your land. So you need $120,000 to build your house and pay off your land. The real estate appraiser says that after it's built, your house on your land will only be worth $100,000. That means that the lender will only give you $100,000 to build your house and pay off your land. You're going to have to come up with $20,000 in cash from somewhere. Now, if you're lucky and you're in a good housing market and property values are up, the real estate appraiser might say that after it's been built, your house on your land will be worth $120,000 then the lender will most likely be willing to make the construction loan for $120,000. $20,000 would go to pay off the loan on the land, and then you would have $100,000 left over to build your house. Can't even do that right. If you made it this far in my video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Why do I keep pointing?